New research shows that elevation changes in earthquakes in Italy's Campi Flegrei volcanic area are caused by rising pressure in a geothermal reservoir, not magma or its gases as commonly thought. Channeling water runoff or lowering groundwater levels could reduce risks for surrounding communities. Tensions are rising in southern Italy as the landscape above the Campi Flegrei caldera shows signs of worrying new volcanic activity. In the town of Pozzuoli, an area long known for its geothermal unrest, a recently repaired stretch of asphalt has cracked and caved in again. Beneath the asphalt, superheated gases have forced their way to the surface, melting the tar and releasing a column of sulfur-rich steam. The inescapable smell of volcanic gas now wafts across the hillside, raising concerns among local residents and scientists. While authorities debate disaster responses and evacuation protocols, researchers may have found a way to thwart the cyclic unrest altogether by managing water runoff or lowering groundwater levels, thus reducing fluid pressure within the geothermal reservoir. Through subsurface imaging and lab experiments, Stanford scientists have shown how pressure buildup from water and vapor in the reservoir under Campi Flegre can lead to earthquakes when the caprock or lid seals. The research, published in Science Advances on May 2, shows that the recurrence of an overpressured reservoir was behind deformation and seismicity in the early 1980s and again over the past 15 years, ultimately leading to the identification of the underlying mechanism. The findings challenge a widely held theory that shaking is driven by magma or its gases rising to shallower depth when melt from a deep melt zone moves upward into the upper subsurface under the volcanic area. They also reveal how the rate at which water gradually recharges the reservoir influences the rate of deformation and changes in the height of the land. The researchers analyze recurring patterns and common characteristics in the imaging of subsurface structures and earthquakes from Campi Flegre's two most recent periods of unrest characterized by land uplift and burst-like shaking, accompanied by rumbling sounds that have become a signature feature for the population. Scientists suspect this activity signals steam-driven explosions, triggered when liquid water rapidly flashes to steam during fracturing caused by earthquakes. The study includes data from the unrest of 1982 to 1984 and 2011 to 2024. We have been looking at something that occurred decades apart, but there are profound similarities in the imaging which point not only to a cyclical pattern of the phenomenon, but also to a common underlying cause, said co-author Grazia Delandro, a researcher at the University of Naples, Federico II, Italy, and visiting scholar at Stanford. From there started the idea to work together, especially looking at rock physics. Using rock physics is the only way to say something quantitative about the imaging of the subsurface. It's been a challenge for the last three years. Many buildings have been damaged by continuous shaking and some people don't have homes, said Venorio, who grew up in Pozzuoli and was forced to evacuate in the 1980s. This project is my goal as a citizen now, not just as a geophysicist, because the study suggests that unrest can be managed rather than just monitored, opening the way to prevention. Historically, the uplift in volcanic areas has been widely accepted as being linked to magma-related refilling processes, which assumes magma and where its gases are primary drivers of deformation and then earthquakes. But this may not always be the case according to the study's findings. While some researchers began exploring the relationship between precipitation and seismicity in the last decade, the study clarifies that it's not the rainfall itself, but rather the pressure resulting from the slow but steady accumulation of water in a sealed reservoir that leads to fracturing, and consequently, shaking, Venorio said. One notable feature of Campi Flegre is the fibrous nature of the caprock atop the geothermal reservoir. Fibrous materials are used in engineering for structural reinforcement as they can deform without immediately fracturing. They can accumulate strain, which in the volcanic system could eventually be released through a sudden eruption of superheated water, steam, and volcanic ash.
The researchers examined 24 years of rainfall patterns, the directions of subsurface water flow, and the process of Kiprock sealing to understand the recharge of the geothermal reservoir and its pressure buildup. In Venorio's Rock Physics and Geomaterials Lab, they demonstrated how cracks in the Kiprock seal through interactions of the rock's minerals with hydrothermal water and steam. To test the Caprox characteristics, the study authors conducted experiments using a hydrothermal vessel that functions like a tool familiar to many Italians, a mocha pot or stubbed up espresso maker. They filled the bottom chamber with brine and the top with volcanic ash and crushed rocks typical of Campi Flegre, then heated the vessel to the temperature found in the geothermal reservoir. Within a day, mineral fibers formed and cracks in the rock layer rapidly sealed through cementation. This creates a closed system that allows fluid pressure to build up until it fractures the surrounding rock. Fracturing from earthquakes causes a sudden drop in fluid pressure as liquid water flashes into steam and escapes. That produces explosive bursts and booming sounds typical of the area, Honorio said. The researchers applied multiple disciplines to reveal how Campi Flegre operates as a closed system, including tomography of the subsurface, which Delandro carried out using earthquake records to construct images of the subsurface that can be analyzed like a CT scan. Imaging the subsurface through geophysical methods is like an old-fashioned doorbell. It tells us that someone is ringing at the door, but it doesn't say who it is. Thus, the interpretation of tomography images must be tested in the laboratory. That's what makes this collaboration between seismology and rock physics so powerful, Honorio said.